Praise the Lord and God bless you. We thank God for a new day that the Lord allowed us to see. Welcome to Midday Mountain brought to you by Triumph Church. Run of this is Triumph for Thursday. We thank God for you being with us on today. Today we're continuing still in the book of Romans. We're in chapter number 15. We're getting closer to the end. Amen. But we're going to look at chapter number 15. That'll be coming right up. Amen. Praise the Lord on today. I thank God for you being with us on today. My name is Pastor Christopher S. Harrison. If this is your first time, amen. All of our contact information is at the bottom of your screen and our social media outlets are in the lower corner. Amen. We'd love to have you connect with us. Like, comment, subscribe. I know you're not new to the YouTube or Facebook or social media world. You know how all this works and how you can help. Man, the popularity and the spread of certain channels and videos. So please help us out. Help us out by liking and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed to Triumphant Living, which you're watching us on today. And also scoot on over to Triumph Church Run on okay, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram and connect with us there as well. We'd love to have you a part of our community. Amen. And if you're anywhere in the Rono Valley, Love to have you in our church. We're there on Sunday mornings at 1030 at Triumph Church, Ronald, 420 South Pilot Street in Vinton, Virginia. Amen. We just love the Word of God and we love to see people come together with like-mindedness to follow the Word and all that it has for us. Today, we are in the Book of Romans, chapter number 15. Book of Romans, chapter number 15. And uh, if you're new to the format, we just read the scripture. The wise man would say elaborate on it, although we we'll call it preaching or not, but it's just 10 minutes in the Word for your lunch hour. It's program for your lunchtime hour. It comes live at 12 o'clock, but you can watch it anytime. Anytime you have lunch, you can have first shift, second shift, third shift, whenever. We're just glad that you're able to view. Amen. So looking at chapter number 15, beginning at verse 1, it says, We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each one of us uh, please his neighbor for his good, and each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for your instruction, or our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the, uncirc to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, and him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I myself am satisfied about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to instruct one another. But on some points I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Illyricum, um, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. 
This is the reason why I have so often been hindered from coming to you. But now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, and since I have longed for many years to come to you, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain, and to be helped on my journey there by you, once I have enjoyed your company for a while. At present, however, I am going to Jerusalem, bringing aid to the saints. For Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to make some contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. For they were pleased to do it, and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings, they ought also to be of service to them in material blessings. When therefore I have completed this and have delivered to them what has been collected, I will leave for Spain by way of you. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessings of Christ. I appeal to you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf, that I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. May the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Paul is getting close. This is the last chapter, but Paul's getting close to wrapping up uh, his discourse with the uh, people of Rome. Amen. And in the course of that, he's talking about the strong and the weak, uh, being able to help one another uh, and being our responsible responsibility uh, to do that, to help one another. So if we are strong, we have the natural responsibility to bear those that are weak. Amen. So uh, uh, sorry, but when we look at it, we understand we have that mindset to help one another. So Paul, in, in that sense, is is wrapping things up. He has one more final thought. He does, but in this chapter, you kind of feel him wrapping things up, uh, concluding. He gives an amen even at the end. But he's talking about the connectivity of the body of Christ and how he had longed to come to them. Um, and have that mindset. Now, he, he, he initially talks about uh, helping one another, being combined with one another, and being a part of one another to help your neighbor and build them up so that we all can lift each other up through the Word of God, through the power of God, uh, through encouragement, through harmony, just bringing Rome into the body of Christ. I understand Rome was a place he hadn't visited. Uh, it was a, a community that developed through some of the political uh, stances. We talked about the Jews being expelled and finding a home there, Christians being converted there, and the church being kind of a mesh and a melting pot of those who believe uh, from both sides of, of the spectrum. And so, but Paul wanted to go to kind of bring them in because it was yet another, what you would consider a Gentile church. It was a Christian church under the uh, Roman Empire. And so he wanted to be there. And so he's kind of bringing them in, introducing himself, his letter. He talks about how he spoke boldly to them and, and all these things and um, wanted to either uh, connect them. And so that's why we talk about how Paul broke down the gospel, the salvation, the, uh, everything in the book of, of Romans. It was kind of him uh, giving them, unloading on them all his wisdom, his knowledge, his connectivity, his anointing vindicating itself. All of that was given to him. And that's why Romans is such a powerful book. And so um, uh, he does that to bring them in and to bring a connectivity there so that when he comes they'll be familiar with him, they'll understand him, they'll feel connected to the other churches that he had established and so that he could uh, have a, uh, uh, a welcome visit and, uh, and, and to bring the blessings of God, and though you could deal with Apollos and different ones, but though they weren't uh, originally a part of the churches that he visited on his missionary journeys initially, um, you can imagine that he still was a figure to them because some of the people he worked with uh, traveled to Rome and, and did things of that nature. So they were connected, though they weren't visited by Paul. Um, but he even goes on later on to talk about uh, he didn't come to them because they were doing well. And he didn't want to just build on somebody else's foundation. A lot of times 
he wanted to go where places where the gospel hadn't been preached. And uh, that's a good desire to have, because a lot of times you look at it, a lot of people go and build on another man's foundation. But if you go and, and, and do uh, what God has for you to do, and, and we pray that he allows us to visit people that haven't heard the gospel and haven't heard the truth of the word of God. And so that was, was Paul's intent. But now that he says, he's sort of kind of saying, I completed my work, I've, I've reached the places that God had for me to reach, now I want to come to you. And so uh, he, he had that desire and wanted to be a part of Rome, but yet he still wanted to encourage them, lift them up, and uh, and and even solicit their prayers for the journeys that he had coming up ahead. And so Paul's wrapping things up. He has one more chapter. It seems uh, kind of out of place. Seems like he ended the book here. We don't know really why it was formatted that way, or maybe he just had a final thought. Um, but we'll deal with Romans 16 coming up. Amen. Next. Amen. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. I'm over my time, but I hope your lunch or whatever hour you're able to hear this has been blessed. And that God will continue to bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you. And do pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Amen. And we'll continue to watch God change things. God bless you in Jesus' name.